Hi, welcome to this video about equivalence testing with SPSS for correlations. For an equivalence test for correlations, we set a lower bound and an upper bound for our correlation, and we test if our correlation is smaller than the upper bound and at the same time higher than the lower bound. There are two related techniques how to do that. One, we could run two one-sided tests. One one-sided test against the upper bound, and the second one-sided test against the lower bound. And if both those tests are significant, we have shown equivalence to zero. The second approach is constructing a 90% confidence interval. And if this 90% confidence interval for our correlation lies inside the equivalence boundaries, then we know our correlation is significantly smaller than the upper bound and at the same time significantly higher than the lower bound and thus equivalent to zero. In this example we have set the lower bound at minus 0.3 and the upper bound for our correlation at 0.3. And we see that our 90% confidence interval lies completely within those boundaries Therefore, our correlation would be equivalent to zero. So, how do we do this with SPSS? First, we have to choose boundaries. We do that based on the smallest effect size of interest. What that is depends on our research question. In this article by Lakens, Scheel and Isacher, you'll find a couple of approaches how to specify a smallest effect size of interest. You'll find a link to this article in the description of this video. For our example, let's assume that we set boundaries at minus 0.3 and plus 0.3 for our correlation. Then we calculate R. And we do that with the ordinary correlations command. From the correlation output, we need two numbers. We need this correlation and we need the sample size for the correlation. Then we construct the 90% confidence interval. Unfortunately, you can't do this from the SPSS menu. You have to use SPSS syntax. On the IBM help pages for SPSS, there is a page with a syntax example for calculating confidence intervals for correlations. The link is in the description of the video too. And the syntax code you'll find there has two parts. The first part defines the data and we have to change this part with our numbers. In this case, each row would lead to one confidence interval. The first number in each row is the correlation. The second number in each row is the sample size. And the third number in each row is the confidence level. So for our example, here we have our correlation. Here we have our sample size and here we have to put in 0.90 as our confidence level. We run this part and then follows the second part of the syntax. You can just run it, you don't have to understand it. And this is the output I would be getting with my data example. Here are the three numbers we have put in, the correlation, the sample size and the confidence level. And here the result, the lower limit of the confidence interval for the correlation and the upper limit for the confidence interval. The only thing that remains to be done is comparing our pre-specified boundaries with this confidence interval. My boundaries were minus 0.3 and plus 0.3 and here is the resulting confidence interval for our data. And here we see the confidence interval lies completely within those boundaries. Therefore, we have shown equivalence, that is, our correlation is equivalent to zero based on our pre-specified boundaries. Now you know how you can run an equivalence test for correlations with SPSS. You'll find a link to my other statistic tutorials in the description of this video.